welcome to Super Fast Tortoise. Today we have a great special video for you. This is a 5 tips commander deck tech video and it's a viewer suggestion from the viewer Jakar Umbra. Jakar Umbra. Jakar Umbra. And my apologies if I enunciated that wrong. Today's deck tech is going to be on Astrid the Mask. Astrid the Mask. Astrid the Mask. And we start right now. Today's video is a commander deck tech for Estrid the Masked. I also feature a 5 tips for new players for commander gameplay. I did my best to keep it as short and knowledgeable as one could. Please enjoy the video. Estrid the Masked. This planeswalker is our commander. She costs 1 genetic, a green, a white, and a blue. Legendary planeswalker, Estrid. She enters the battlefield with 3 loyalty counters. This bald Sigourney Weaver from Aliens Planeswalker has the first ability of plus two. You untap each enchanted permanent you control. This gives you synergy to build around. And that's what I've done. I focused on this ability as a primary mechanic for the deck. Her second ability is negative one. You create a white or enchantment token name masked attached to another target permanent. The token has enchant permanent and has a totem armor. This helps protect our strategy, our creatures, our enchantments. Also synergizes with the first ability. Astrid's ultimate is negative seven. You put the top seven cards of your library into your graveyard. Then return all non aura enchantment cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. Then you do the same for all your aura cards. This is a win condition. You can't depend on it. We care more about the first two abilities. Which brings us to tip number one. Command with purpose. Build around a commander that interacts with the board state or that interacts with a zone inside the game you do not have normal access to. Also, emphasize a clear synergy to build around. Let's start with the mana ramp and fixing portion of the deck. And in this section, you will notice there are more enchantments and aura cards than your regular basic sorceries. And this is a conscious decision to go with the enchantment theme and to go along with Estrid the Mask. And we start with Abundant Growth. I use cards like this, enchantment auras that enchant lands, so I can abuse Estrid's first ability to accelerate my spell outtake. So I can cast Estrid, use her first ability, and tap my lands and play another spell. We have Farseek, Fertile Ground, Font of Fertility, Nylea's Presence, Urban Utopia, Krufix God of Horizons, which serves multiple purposes. One, he gives me no maximum hand size, and any mana I want to store, I can store with him, and it becomes colorless mana, and that works for my late game cards. We have Smothering Tithe, and our classic Soul Ring. Now we go on to the card draw and tutors section of the deck. In general consensus, you want about 6 to 10 draw cards and 3 plus tutors in your deck. To be honest, if you can fit more card draw in your deck that fits your theme, synergy, end game, and scope, if it helps with getting to your win conditions faster and more effectively, helping you get to your removal and your ramp cards, put it in. Starting off our card draw and tutor selection, we have Satessan Champion. This is an enchantress style effect, basically saying whenever we play an enchantment card that we control, we draw a card. We have multiple cards like this in the deck, so we can draw and net more cards throughout the game off one effect. And if there's multiple of these style of cards on the battlefield, we will draw more cards entirely. We have Seder Enchanter, Eidolon of Blossoms, Enchantress's Presence, and moving to a different form of draw, we have Monastery Siege, which lets us choose cons 
to draw an additional card at the beginning of our upkeep and discard a card. And we have dragons, which help protect our spells if we need to evolve the game. We have Sylvan Library to give us card selection and extra draw if we want to pay for it. We have Sensei's Divining Top, which lets us control the top card of our deck and draw more cards. We have Calyx, Destiny's Hand. This Planeswalker is really solid for this deck specifically. His plus one ability is why he's in the deck. We look at the top four cards of our deck and we get to put an enchantment from that selection of cards into our hand. And we put the rest of the bottom in a random order of our library. His second ability is technically removal and works pretty good if you have an enchantment, which in this deck we will have plenty of those. His last ultimate ability is similar to Astrid's ultimate, which gives us secondary ultimate win condition. On to our tutors, we have Eladomri's Call. It's an instant that lets us search our library for a creature card and put it into our hand, helping us get to our win conditions faster. We have Idyllic Tutor, which lets us search for any enchantment in the deck. We have Enlightened Tutor, which lets us search for any enchantment in the deck or one of our artifacts that we have, and it puts it on top of the library. And in our removal section, this section could use some upgrading. But because I'm stubborn, all the removal in this deck that I have in this selection are enchantments. And that's because I really want to hit the theme of enchantments here. We have Suspension Field, Journey to Nowhere, Oblivion Ring, Banishing Light, Detention Sphere, Martyr's Bond, which is technically not removal, but makes it harder for our opponents to want to target our stuff and works as removal. We have Control Magic, which is a form of removal. And we have Corrupted Conscience, which is both removal and a win condition, and in my opinion, is very underrated. Now, onto the board wipes. This selection of cards is very important. In this section, we put an emphasis on clearing the board of creatures because we do not have a lot of creatures to protect our life total. So we need to reset the board of creatures as often as possible where we can. We have Shatter the Sky, Day of Judgment, Supreme Verdict, Winds of Wrath, Rout, Acroma's Vengeance, and a Martial Coup, which has a dual purpose, to give us a little bit of creatures to use with our auras, or to board wipe and fill our board with some creatures while we do it. Which brings us to tip number two, the scope. Mana ramp and mana fixing, card draw, removal, and board wipes are all part of your scope. Mana ramp and mana fixing sets you up for the later game. Card draw and tutors feeds your hand to set tempo. Removal takes care of the problematic cards that you need to take care of. Board wipes helps you stay in the game when behind. The scope lets you see what cards you can deal with, what situations you can handle, and helps prepare and set up for what to expect during the game, giving you leverage to plan ahead. Now on to the recursion part of the commander deck. In this selection, any deck would want 3 to 5 recursion spells. This is so you can be able to reconstruct your strategy, get back cards you can reuse to ramp or draw more cards, or get a creature back that you need. For our first recursion spell, we have Creeping Renaissance which lets us choose a permanent type and return all cards of the same type from our graveyard to your hand with flashback makes this a strong card. We have Savine's Reclamation, which lets us bring back a permanent with converted man cost three or less from the graveyard to the battlefield and has flashback. We have Replenish, which is good for resetting our board when we need it. When all of our stuff gets wiped, we can use it to bring back all of our enchantments from the graveyard. We have Tamayo, Collector of Tales, 
This two generic green blue five loyalty planeswalker is pretty solid. I use her mainly for her second ability to neg three, return target card from your graveyard to your hand. Her first ability to plus one and choose a non line card name, reveal the top four cards of your library and put all cards with the chosen name from among them to your hand is really good only if you have Sensei's Divining Top. Then her static ability where spells and abilities your opponent's control can't cause you to discard cards or sacrifice a person permanent is really solid just overall. Which leads us to tip number three, graveyard hate. Cards that remove cards from a graveyard is a great idea and can sometimes shut down a player's win condition, winning plan, and strategy. But run about two to four of these kind of cards. My deck don't mess with other players' graveyards because I have a straightforward approach with this deck and its win condition. Just get to it kind of strategy. Now the clones section of the deck, the copy enchantment portion of the deck. Clones work as a second copy of a card on the battlefield. It's like having a second card to add a second layer to your plan, or add a second removal spell, or another aura on your land, or using an enchantment your opponent may have that you can use. Starting with copy enchantment. It's an enchantment that copies an enchantment. Astrid's Invocation copies an enchantment that you control. Mirror Maid copies an enchantment or artifact. Clever Impersonator copies any non-land permanent on the battlefield from creatures, enchantments, artifacts, and planeswalkers. Now for my heavenly creatures section of the deck. Here I wanted an angel theme and I kept to my enchantment aura theme. This is important because this section will explain how I want to win my games. This section explains my win conditions. The first creature on our list is Sovereigns of Lost Allura. This spirit costs 4 generic white and a blue for a 4 or 5 creature. It has Exalted. Whenever a creature you control attacks alone, that creature gets plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn. Then it has Whenever a creature you control attacks alone, you may search your library for an aura card that could enchant that creature, put it onto the battlefield attached to that creature, then shuffle your library. This is strong and lets me search for big aura spells that can help me win the game instantly or push an opponent back and gaining me advantage. Our next creature, Esperia Supreme Judge, costs 2 generic, 2 white, 2 blue for 6-4 flying legendary sphinx, which says whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, you may draw a card. This creature is here to deter my opponents from wanting to attack me knowing that I'll be drawing some pretty good cards. Here we have Bruna, Light of Alabaster. This 3 generic, 2 white, and a blue 5-5 five, five legendary angel with flying vigilance has a unique ability. She has, whenever Bruna, Light of Alabaster attacks or blocks, you may attach to it any number of aura cards on the battlefield, and you may put onto the battlefield attached to it any number of aura cards that could enchant it from your graveyard and or hand. This is what my deck wants to win with and makes a really strong threat to end the game with. July Voice of Plenty. This 3-4, three, 3 generic, 1 white legendary angel has flying and she is to protect from planeswalkers, me, and creatures I control, giving us all hexproof. She also buffs my creatures by paying 4 generic and 2 green. I can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each creature I control, making my small 4-4 four, four angels into bigger threats. Luminarch Ascension. This enchantment costs a generic and 1 white. It has, at the beginning of each opponent's end step, if you don't lose life this turn, you may put a quest counter on Lumark Ascension. And for a generic and a white, you can create a 4-4 white angel creature token with flying. You can activate this ability only if Luminarch Ascension has 4 or more quest counters on it. This card is powerful, especially in the early game when no one's really attacking each other. But also, if you have the ability to sustain yourself to get all the counters on here to activate this enchantment, you got a strong angel token engine that will spread wide and attack for days. Sigil of the Empty Throne. This 3 generic 2 white enchantment says, Whenever you cast an enchantment spell, create a 4-4 white angel creature token with flying. So if I can't go tall with my Voltron leaders, I can go wide with my 4-4 angel tokens to win the game. 
And the last card on our Heavenly Creatures list, we have Sarah the Benevolent. This Planeswalker costs two generic and two white mana for a four loyalty Planeswalker. Her first ability is plus two. Creatures you control with flying get plus one plus one until the turn, supporting my 4-4 angel tokens. Her negative three ability says create a 4-4 white angel creature token with flying and vigilance. Then her negative six ability says you get an emblem with if you control a creature, damage that would reduce your life total to less than one reduces it to one instead. Now, if I can get the emblem, that will support me staying in the game until I can swing for a win. But we're not worried about that. We are more worried about getting that 4-4 token out and pumping up our creatures with her first ability. On to Pill of Fort Enchantments. When choosing Pill of Fort Enchantments in this section, I wanted cards that helped protect myself and permanents I control on the battlefield. Also to have good targets for my cloning copy enchantment spells. We have Ghostly Prison, Propaganda, and Sphere Safety, which all three of these cards will deter my opponents from wanting to attack me for the taxation that they will have to pay to attack with for each creature that they want to attack me with. And we have Privileged Position. This enchantment says other permanents you control cannot be the target of spells or abilities your opponents control. This is a great target for my copy clone effects because if I have two of these on the battlefield, none of my permanents can be targeted by a spell or an ability that my opponents control. Now for the enchantment aura and Voltron cards of the deck. In this section of the deck, you will see the cards that will help us win the game. The cards that will let us swing in for lethal towards our opponents. The first card in this list of Aura and Voltron cards, Helm of the Gods is a flagship card setting the tenor for the kind of Auras and Voltron style cards we want in our deck. We have Ethereal Armor, All That Glitters, Ancestral Mask, Black Blade Reforged, Sage's Reverie, On Sarah's Wings to keep up with the Angel theme, Bear Umbra, Celestial Mantle, and Eldrazi Conscription. With every Voltron style card in this deck, we wanted to say several things. Go big, play big, let no enchantment go wasted, and may every play aim towards the end game strategy. Which leads us to tip number four, theme, synergy, and win conditions. When constructing your commander deck, you want to put a heavy emphasis on these three elements. Next to working on your scope, everything else is to focus on your theme, synergy, and have it all lead to your win conditions. Now, for the final section of the deck, we are on the land. This deck runs 37 lands, and that's about right for any commander deck you want to build. You want to stick between 36 and 38 land, but don't feel bad if you have to have 39 land, but I would not go under 36 lands. We start with three forests, three plains, four islands, then we have a tropical island, savanna, gray pelt refuge, scattered groves, Celestia Sanctuary, Temple Garden, Windswept Heath, Tundra, Azorius Chancery, Port Town, Hollowed Fountain, A Glacial Fortress, A Prairie Stream, A Seedside Citadel, command tower and for some utility lands we have terramorphic expanse evolving wilds ash barrens myriad landscape temple of the false god 
Reliquary Tower, Rogue's Passage, Gavany Township, and Hall of Hiliad's Generosity. Which brings us to tip number five. Land to ramp, draw, and removal. Keep your mana strong by having a bit more land of the color that is the color of your land ramp and mana fixings convert a mana cost. Then, depending on which you have more of, have your second most color of land fit alongside with your draw cards or removal. That brings us to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit that bell so you are notified when I upload a new video. Let me know in the comments who is your favorite commander. See you next video.